Hi, I'm Morten Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello again, Rovers fans. We're back. Rovers have made a signing. Dom, <laughs> man, can you believe it? It's here. And it's Callum Britton, the wingback from Barnsley, 24 years old. His last name is your country, which would be like my favorite team in the MLS, signing a guy named Jared America, which I find to be insane that that's his last name. So before we get into all of the juiciness with the first signing of this offseason, I'd love your initial reactions. Dom, what do you think about Callum Britton? Um, it fills the void. That's what it feels like. Uh, yeah. it, it, for once, you know, when Mowbray spoke about buying defenders years ago, it's good that he's finally come true with his word. It took him to leave the club to, for that to happen. <laughs> Maybe on the uh, a, a bit of the uh, the high uh, side of value wise, but um, it feels good to have a sort of a surprisingly spacious boot of uh, money to spend for once. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we also, we're actually, we're actually buying someone. <laughs> yeah, Christ. it's not a lot. <laughs> teased all summer, and then they get to this point, and it's like, oh, right. oh, we're actually doing it now. All right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I mean, um, it's it, it's positive. That's how I'm yeah. feeling. Yeah. Good. Good. You should. Jordy, uh, what say do you like Callum Britton as a replacement for Ryan Nyambi? Listen, I, I was looking down at my phone this morning and when I saw I saw Rich Sharp tweet, we're, we're moving for a player. I'm I'm looking at Callum Britton, I'm thinking, wow, we, we need we need a right back. This is the one and I, I, I love James Brown. I think he's a good right back, but we need we need someone to push the best out of James Brown and probably to be starting over James Brown right now. I'm looking down at my phone. I'm thinking we're signing someone nowhere. I look at the price tag over one million. I'm thinking, is this actually Blackburn? Is this what Blackburn's doing? I'm ecstatic. I, I I'm actually looking forward to seeing him play. I'm. I just I'm just so glad that we're actually making big money moves now. I'm proving that we're not a team to be messed around with. Not a team that's going to start 17 year olds at centre back, right back, centre defensive mid. We're actually going to bring in good experience, good players, and. You know, it's it's just it's a move in the right direction, and that's what we need so far. It's only one. Let's not get too excited. You know, we can't just rely on a right back to do the scoring, do the everything for us. But it's moving in the right direction, and that's all I care about at the minute. Right on. Speaking of moving in directions, Ryan Nahambi. Now remember, y'all, I'm a Yank, so like the bitter. 500 year old rivalries between these areas is not in my blood innately. I can only empathize, but it seems like a pretty not good move. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Dom, Niambi, you, you're well, a Wigan. To, to quote the chant, he drinks the vodka and he drinks the Jaeger. I think it's gone to his head because when we, when we talk about rivalries, Wigan isn't really a it's sort of a footnote, isn't it, on on the rivalry? You got Burnley and Preston, and even Blackpool. That you could argue it was only the the League One uh, situation that um, intensified it. You'd say. Mm. Um, to sum it up, the agents had an absolute howler. <laughs> mm. That's all I can say about it, really, I'm, I'm sure people will agree with that. Yeah, social media has been a buzz. Jordy, what do you think about this? I know uh, you've been. Uh, Piped in and and doing some stuff, Niambi to Wigan. What say you? How you feel? Judas, Judas, <laughs> Judas, Judas. Right. The only difference is Jesus could, Jesus could forgive Judas. We can't. That we can't. We can't forgive Niambi for that. And you might shake your head. You might want not to <laughs> Wigan. To Wigan. You had offers from Middlesbrough. You had offers from. You know, Lenham going to Middlesbrough didn't hurt as much. You know, Middlesbrough are moving in the right direction under Chris Wilder. Niambi joins. You know. Good for him. Move in the right direction. You go do that. We can sign our players and bring them in. Wigan. Wigan yeah. Athletic. Next door. That's like me going next door and taking a poo on the doorstep. You just don't do it. You really don't. So for me, personally, I'm not happy. I'm yeah. really not. I think that, you know, he's definitely gone for the money. A year contract makes no sense. Definitely. We're going to pump in a lot of money into them. So I get the money aspect of it, the financial situation. But I think he's put us in a bad situation ourselves. And now... Hopefully, Britain's the answer. Hopefully, well, he, he is done. What I will add is that uh, I think you know you work in the uh, the uh, the journalist uh, sector. Is there any news that uh, Ryan Eambe loves a pie? Because <laughs> that has to be the only reason why he's going to work in right now. Who, who ate all the pie? Ryan Eambe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ate all the pie. That's all I've heard. Anyway, 
Yeah. And, and again, I've only heard people mention the wig and kebab. I'm not even sure I have any context for what that is or means, but they've talked nicely about the wig and kebab. It's the only positive thing I've ever heard about Wigan. Do you know what it is? No. You've never seen so, Wigan kebab? Oh. So it's you know, like a, a, in Britain, they have different words for it, but in around Blackburn, it's like a tea, a tea cake, sort of bomb bread roll. Okay. And they put a pie in the middle of it. So it's wow. essentially it's two, pieces it of, two pieces of bread with a pie in the middle. Yeah. So it's not on a stick? No, 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 no. no. Oh. But even then, even then in England, right? I know this is away from what's happening. Kebabs are never on a stick usually. They're in a naan bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, over here, everything kebab is on a stick. That means it's skewered kebabs. Nah. Yeah. Fun. That, yes. we'll, we'll do a whole video on the etymology <laughs> of kebab on our <laughs> etymology channel that we all run together. <laughs> um, but I've, uh, so for the people at home listening, thanks again. Obviously, you can give us a like, give us a comment on how you feel about Nyambi going to Wigan on a one year go on, take the money and run type of thing. Um, I've pulled some numbers, gentlemen, pulled some stats for our new man, Callum Britton, for Judas, <laughs> Ryan Nyambi, and to throw a curveball in there, one of the better right backs in the championship last year, um, that would be Jed Spence. So we're going to look at some of their numbers. I'll ask you guys to maybe guess where you think they're at for a number. I'll give you a range. So you're not looking completely foolish. I would have to do that to you. But if you're listening at home or on your drive or whatever, I encourage you also to conjure a number in your mind. So one thing we know Callum Britton offers for Nambi is more going forward, right? But is that enough to offset the value that Nambi gives us defensively? Because I think, would you guys both agree Nambi is a very good defender in space? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. You could argue is a he was a better even in a back three and as a right center back than an actual right back. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a very good Dom. I love that take. That's ex that that's very much how I feel. So let's look at some defensive metrics, right? We'll start with Ryan Nyambi. This is per 90, only the championship, only last season. All right. So we're really narrowing it down to what did Nyambi do in a contract year? What did he do in a year where the Rovers were pushing for the playoffs and had expectations of the playoffs. And then it all went south in the final two weeks of the season, right? Four and 14. So do you guys think Ryan Nyambi is over or under aerial duels one, right? So 50% is the line. Do you think he's over 50 or under 50 for aerial duels? Dom, let's go with you first. What do you think? So is, it, is this is this last season or is it the season where they were playing well? Just last season. <laughs> Just last season. Um. I mean, I'd like to think the NBA was better in that regard. Yeah. Okay. Jordy, you're going to take the over? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. You're Definitely. both correct, but barely 50.4%. So, you know, really good numbers, you're going to be around 55%, right? Solid numbers, maybe 52, 53, something like that. And there's higher, sure. But so he was barely, right? Barely on aerial duels. Here's another fun one. He didn't do a lot of sliding tackles, so... We'll ignore that number for now. But um, here's a good one. Loose ball duels one, right? So I envision this, and you guys tell me what your version of this would be, but I could see this being a ball that's careened off a shin or something like that, and two players are charging after it as somebody's trying to gain possession. Would you guys think say that's kind of a fair? Yeah, like a recovery sort of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what do you guys think? Loose balls, duels won, over, under 50%. I, I, I'm going to say under. Mm -hmm. Good. Dom? Uh, uh -oh. I think yeah. I think his, his best attribute was his uh, recovery because of how explosive he was. So I'd want to say higher, but yeah, right. you it? I'm, I'm going to say higher, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what I would think, too. But actually, it's 41.3%. 41.3, which you would think would be higher. His yeah. recoveries in an opponent's half, Dom, to not have you feel like you were off base, he had about six per 90, which is 23%. So you're asking yourself, well, is that good or bad? Jed Spence was at six at 33%. And Callum Britton, let's find his recoveries up here. Boom. Uh, 7.5 at 33%. So they're their recoveries and opponents have both of them a full 10% higher than Niambi. That kind of blows my mind. Yeah. That's, yeah. 
For, right. Yeah. Cause again, we're talking about defense metrics. All right. So out of Jed Spence, Ryan Iambi and Callum Britton, who do you think had the most clearances per 90 out of those three names? Who had the most? Well, I, 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 to be honest, I'd say, I'd say Ryan Iambi is at the bottom of that. I, I, honestly, I think I would. Um, I think, I, I think this could just be biased just because we've signed him. I think Britain won, <laughs> Jed Spence two, and I'd say Nyambe third. Cool. Yeah. Dom, what do you think? I, feel like, I feel like Barnsley had a lot of defending to do. Last yeah, week. That was yeah. Nice. yeah. No, that's why I'm going with that. I have a parallel thought to that, I think, because of how defensive Barnsley had to be last season because of how poor they were. It Very good be. point. And that is dovetails perfectly, gentlemen. To anyone listening to this, know that we're not saying these in a vacuum with some kind of absolutism. This is all in the context of the team, how they played in the season, all that. But it bears, it's all interesting, right? It's like ingredients in a curry. A curry is <laughs> complicated and it takes time. It's a lot of flavors. Like it's, a wicked kebab. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you are you guys are pretty darn close. Britain had the most clearances at 2.09. Niambi's was at 1.95, which does make a lot of sense because of how defense oriented he was on the pitch. And then Jed spent only at 1.41. So you could tell force were taking possession and he was an offensive guy. So those yeah. are some just defensive numbers. Let's look at some passing numbers because if you guys have heard this too, one knock on Callum Britton is that final ball. Have you guys kind of heard that? What have you discovered in your research about Britain's passing? Do you guys have any knowledge or opinions on it? Not, not, not mainly on his passing. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna focus mainly on his attacking. I mean, when he was at MK Dons for four years, I mean he 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 burst onto the scene with the under twenty England international team and stuff like that. Yeah. And the the reason he did that was because of the 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 FA. I mean the FA in general, England team in general. I mean the new the thing that's getting implemented these days is attacking fullbacks. I mean mm -hmm. attacking fullbacks is, is crucial in today's game, and I think that's why in a way I know. We're not on about him at the minute, but Nambe fell so short recently because his best aspect is that defending part of his game. So as a fullback, he didn't really fit the new system that teams are implementing. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've heard that a lot of things from some Barnsley fans on my Instagram and stuff like that. I've heard that they loved him attacking, attacking wise. Whenever they did, they said count when when they were countering, he could burst up that pitch, he could get down that right side, and he he knew how to attack properly. But I haven't heard much about his passing. Yeah, Dom, you've heard anything? Any? Uh... Um... Well, the, when I was researching it through the the vacuum of Wikipedia, uh, <laughs> it's all good. Eight assists in seventy six championship games compared to Nambi's seven in one hundred eighty one total appearances. It's double yeah. the amount of output. Right. But, I mean, and an assist is a pass essentially. So yeah. you could yeah. say it's double the amount of quality. And and sometimes a single stat like that speaks volumes, right? Mm -hmm. So Nyambi had no assists last year. You know, his yeah. X, his XV right. was, was 0 0.01. Um, <clears throat> right. So let's talk about attacking for a minute with these guys. I'll throw some random. Again, everyone, I did not plan any of these questions. We're all just riffing so hard right now <laughs> because we can. It's our first time chatting together and we're riffing. And that is, by God, what we shall do. So um, shots on target, shots and then on target. So we is, it, is it including target. Jed, Spence? Yeah, yeah, including Jed. So so Britain, Jed, Nyambi, shots on target per 90, last year championship only. Uh, Spence won, uh, Britain two, and Nyambi three. Got to be. Dom, yeah. do, you, do you agree? The only the only chance I can remember Nyambi ever having close was Huddersfield away. I think did he, he missed like a, from a yard away. Yeah, so, yeah. he had a sitter, but he also had a low shot on goal that was a solid save that looked threatening. I remember that play because it was my mind that it was a 90 shot on if goal. On your, if on your CV, a low shot in 46 games is <laughs> something to go by, then he's got to be bottom of the three. Yeah, right. I understand. So, I think Tom Britton would be the top though, because yeah, yeah, so just the, to, to throw that. Oh, sure, sure. So the numbers going from bottom to the top are 0 0.2, 0 0.55, and 0.84. Pretty big jumps. Yeah, and yeah. at 0.84, it's our new boy, Callum Britton, <laughs> that many shots on goal. Some of that, again, it's all context. Somebody might be getting steam blowing out of there. It's going, 
but Nottingham attack differently and they have other guys. I get it. We're just telling you that this is a player who likes to yeah. go forward and, and be offensive, right? So I think that's a big deal um, that, that he is in that work. Who do you think had the most accurate crosses per 90? Forget about attempts or anything like that. I know that can skew numbers. But just who do you think had the more accurate crosses, Callum Britton or Jed Spence or Ryan Ivey? Yeah, we, we, we can be a question straight away. Um, I, I, I'll say Britton. Okay. Don't. Yeah, I feel like um, everything I've read about his attack of prowess, it has to be Britton because it Jed Spence had a good season last season, but I feel like Callum Britton has had a yeah. more consistent... I, I feel like the key word you used as well was accurate cross, not just cross is getting plowed into the box. And I feel like if we're talking right. about accurate, maybe Britton takes it because I know Jed Spence likes to pump a ball into the box, but I don't know how accurate they were. Yeah, mm. very good. Um, Jed Spence was at 34.2%. Callum Britton, 38.4. Ryan Namby, 28.6%. On just 1.7, 1.17, so not even a, a cross and a half. This is per 90, everyone. So Namby was only getting one cross per 90. Britton was up at three and a half and still completed a higher rate, which tells you that I'm sure Barnsley fans mean well, and I'm sure they're right in a lot of ways. They've watched them more than we have, but I think they're failing to realize compared to what we had, this is a maybe you don't think his final pass is great, but it's certainly a market improvement over what we were given, which should I mean, have some multi dimensionality to the attack. I mean, you've got to, you've got to think about like it doesn't look like we're going to get a, a new striker in a, a, any sort really this year. So you've got Sam Gallagher in the box. I mean, one of his main things is getting that head to the ball, and we haven't seen enough of it over the, over the past couple of years really. And if we're getting a fullback who has got that attacking thing about him, I mean. Harry Pickering, we know he can chuck a ball into the box. I mean, if we get the same on the other side, down the side where we primarily attack down, I mean, just seeing balls getting pumped into the box to Sam Gallagher, that could be a game, could be an absolute game changer for him this year. It could actually get his season properly going with Blackburn and who knows if it'll take him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, uh, Dom, that Galley having some service on that right side might help his game out some more in terms of balance? Well, I feel like playing him up front would be a better shout than a. Uh right wing back that he's been playing. <laughs> I know we're all in the, so, are we all in the same boat that Galley should, should not play at, on the right wing in a 4231 raise your hand if I right, right so yeah, so yeah. let the record show internet we all think we know more than Yondale Thomason <laughs> <laughs> but I agree like I don't know what it is I can't I I get the defensive stuff so maybe he so just yeah. loves it maybe he yeah. just loves it out there like <laughs> yeah do you think this is pure conjecture question does Sam Gallagher really want to play out there and convinces his coaches of, of what he can do out on that side? Or do you think it's a question of he's good defensively and that's why they put him there? You could say both. You could, yeah. you could say yes to both of them, really. Yeah. Uh, Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's it's like the it's like a mystery wrapped in an yeah. enigma. We'll never, unless somebody explicitly <laughs> asks, which maybe that will be you, Jordy, one day. I um, hope so. I'm hoping. If somebody explicitly asked directly, maybe we'll never get an answer. So one thing where Callum Britton does excel is some long passes and long progressive passes. But final weird trivia question. Do you think Callum Britton has more accurate long passes per 90, the percentage, than Jed Spence? Yeah, 100%. Wow, Matt bringing it. Dom, what do you think? Um, Accuracy on long passes. Long passes. Yeah. You, got, you, got to, you got to think how Barnsley played. Like they, were playing, they had to play out the back quite a bit last season with the defending they were doing. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, and it depends how Steve Cooper played uh, Forrest. Because you could argue that Barnsley played the more longer passes in general, like you said. Yeah, whereas the Nottingham Forest probably played the more shorter passes in general. So I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. I'd say Calm Britain was top. Brilliant. See, I'm giving an ambiguous question, and you all are naturally filling in the context, or context with your bright young brains, which is brilliant. You're right. It is all about style, and Forest had more of the ball. They weren't playing as long. Jed was at three long passes per 90 at 38%. Britain at 6.2 at 42.9%. So that's still, a, I think that's a really high number 
That's uh, impressive. Not only passes, but percentage wise, now I'm being 1.5 at 29.5%. Right. So I mean, you, you yeah. can see the golfing quality you're getting there. The, I mean, like I said before, if you're implementing an attacking style of football with your fullbacks these days, you need you need a fullback who's passing is going to be up there, not down here. I mean, it's all good having a fullback who you can rely on defensively, but if he isn't getting that ball up the pitch, you're going to be defending all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. That's right. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so maybe those numbers helped illuminate some people's minds. Maybe both of y'all feel like a little bit more confident or a little more intrigued or whatever. But I thought those were numbers that bear discussion um, today. So big picture, y'all, bring us home, Dom and Matt. What do you feel is Callum Britton's big picture fit this season and going forward? He is only 24. And what are your personal expectations for him in that right side? Uh, we'll start with Jordy this time. Uh, honestly, I think I think it's a very clever signing. I don't think we're I don't I don't think we had to break a bank for a, a right back who is going to be a class a class right back for us. I think that there's a lot of teams that would break the bank for a full back these days, but we've played it safe. We've gone for a full back that's got the the new the new era of football ahead of him. When I say that, I mean the attacking prowess. I mean with bringing him in, it's so clever because. It's 1.5 million for a player. You know you can get someone who can push push teams single-handedly. I mean, in that playoff push that um, that uh, Barnsley got, he was he was single-handedly probably top five players for their team quite easily. A lot of Barnsley fans were saying that to me. So I think for 1.5 million, it's a real bargain. It's an improvement, like we said there. I mean, defensively, we might see a bit of moments where we think we'd rather have Nyambe there because he wouldn't have let that slip. But... At the same time, I think he'll make up for that whilst pushing up the pitch. And I think, like I was saying before, Gallagher, Diaz, he'll be getting good reception from that right-hand side, which is weird because it all came from the left, really. So, we'll see. And I think maybe Tyrese dolan has got a good partnership there, knowing that he's going to get a good pass down that line. He can attack with it. He doesn't have to worry. And I, I, th I think it's there's nothing bad about this sign. I don't think you can pinpoint one bad thing about it. I think it's good replacement. It's solid. And I think that he'll shine under John Dahl Thomason's tactics as well. Nice, man. Dom, how are you feeling, bro? I was just uh, listening in awe then. I was... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, to reiterate what you said, like when you're saying it all came down the left last season, we got we got Pippin as a new signing last um, season. And the expectations should be the same with uh, Callum Britton, no matter how much money we spend on it. Because it comes from a player from essentially League One like what Pickering was from Crew, 1.5 million, you could say it was a lot of money, but when we're comparing it to Jed Spence, who Tottenham just spent 15 million on, we just spent 10% of that money on the same sort of player. From the stats you showed, there's, there's nuances in how they play on the pitch as well, but stats alone, the expectation, let's, let's just simmer for now, because Pickering is the expectation, but Jen, uh, Spence is the hope. I would say. Yeah. Very nicely said, Dom. Oh, oh, beautiful. <laughs> See that? A little whipped cream, a little cherry on top. Boom, bam. That's your video right there. We're going to end <laughs> it on that. It was too poetic not to. This is Rover's chat. Do you guys have uh, Twitter handles? Chunk of fist. <laughs> Am I speaking English? Do you guys have Twitter? Do you guys well, have Twitter? I have a Bebo account. You want to... <laughs> no Twitter? No Twitter account? Yeah, I'd have a twist. Dom, Dom underscore Metacroft. Dom underscore Metacroft. Jordy? Matt Jordy, but most importantly, the Instagram, Rob's Reports. Rob's Report Instagram. Yeah, so check that out, everybody. So look, you want to give us a follow? I'm sure Showbiz Dan will work his magic and put our handles in there. Um, I don't even know why I asked. We're, we're you know, who knows? But, <laughs> but we really appreciate y'all watching, downloading. Let us know in the comments how you feel about Niambi leaving how you feel about Callum Britton as a replacement and what you think Callum's going to bring to the Rovers this season as we d spread our wings under the tutelage of Yondale. That does it for us here at Rovers Chat. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you all in the next one.